My name is Jim. I'm the research coordinator at the Vermont Institute of Natural Science. I'm here today with Rudy, the watershed scientist at the White River Partnership. And behind him, he's got two of his co-workers. We've got Greg Russ, who is our watershed restoration manager, and Siler Russ, who is our all-around expert. So we're here today along the White River at Clifford Park in Hartford, and we're looking for crayfish. And we're here to talk about a project that anyone can be involved in with this heat wave and all this humidity. It's a great time to get out to the river. So we're going to talk about how you can do citizen science while you're here at the water. So Rudy, what species do we expect to find here at the White River? One of the things we like about looking at crayfish in the White River watershed is that there are primarily four species at this time. We have the rusty crayfish, which is appears to be an invasive crayfish that was introduced here and has spread rapidly. The northern clearwater crayfish is the primary native of our watershed. The viral crayfish is an introduced species as well, but seems to have not been as disruptive to its ecosystem. And the big water crayfish, which has only been recently identified in the watershed, but we have turned it up in a number of locations at this point. All right. So we do need some equipment to help us get some crayfish. What do we got here, Rudy? So this is what is referred to as a minnow trap or a bait trap sometimes. And it fits together. The two halves come apart. And there are some notches that collapse it together. We typically put cat food inside right it in there. and yeah. place it right in there Perfect. and then put it, together. put it together. The crayfish can crawl into the end of the trap but it can't get back out. You'll sometimes get some fish in there as well. We try to let those go as quickly as possible but the crayfish will end up putting in some basins and then we can also use our hand nets and our Siler saw in a minute ago catching some and he's off in another section catching a bunch more. We try to use both methods. Last night I set traps here and did not get anything in the traps which is very unusual. But we're having no problem hand netting some today. So far today we have only caught rusty crayfish and the White River Partnership started our monitoring the White River programs partly in response to a 2005 survey in the White River watershed with VINS personnel, White River Partnership staff, and P uh, aquatic biologists from the state of Vermont. At that time we found 85% of what we caught were rusty crayfish. That was a bit of a surprise as these are not native to the watershed. So Rudy, you said these are all rusty crayfish. Can you tell us some of the defining features that lets us know why they're rusty crayfish? So rusty crayfish are part of a genus that three of these species are, and they all have a sharp pointy snout, mm -hmm. the, what we call the rostrum. So the big water crayfish is the only one that has a rounded. The rusty crayfish is very distinctive because of the orange spots on its side that are what give it partly what give it its name. The rusty is from those very rusty spots that almost look like you left your thumbprints on it. Oh, right. We've got resources on our website to help teachers both with a curriculum and a guide that has identifying features. And this poster that Jim is showing you here has some of the key features that we look for to tell these different species apart. Perfect. We also have an iNaturalist index now between the Vermont Institute of Natural Science and the White River Partnership. So if you're out looking for crayfish, if you could snap a picture and post it to the iNaturalist app, that'll auto-populate our database so we can know what crayfish you're seeing and where you found them. And hopefully we find something more than just the rusty crayfish. But we're interested in any observations you can give us. So using your guys, using iNaturalist, I hope you get out there and help us look for some crayfish this summer. So we actually have two different inventories. One, we're looking specifically at crayfish, and that index for, on iNaturalist is all throughout Vermont. So anywhere in the state, if you see a crayfish, we're interested in that data. We also have a separate project through the White River Partnership, another index that's looking at the whole watershed. And can you tell us a little bit more about how that's just a little bit different than the, the crayfish index? So the Monitoring the White River Project helps us with what we've been doing here, keeping track of what's happening in the watershed. And it's a way for our citizen scientists to have their data be meaningful and making contributions. 
and then in the watershed we have a record of what we've seen as well. Now if that seems confusing, don't worry about it. If you take a picture, wherever you are, if you have your location, it auto-populates, right? So you don't have to worry about selecting that box. It just goes right to the crayfish index or right to the white River partnership index. So it's really easy for you, looking really for any observations you can find. We'd love to see your data and help us out with our projects. All right, so Rudy, that was a lot of fun. Thanks for coming out and sharing with us your crayfish knowledge. That was really great. I hope whenever you're out and about, you think to record some crayfish for us. We're going to spend some more time out here getting some more just because it's so much fun. So I really hope you get in on the action as well. Have a blast. <laughs>